Welcome to SAP Jobs Lab. We bring you all possible solution of interview question, including most efficient one. And in today's problem, we are going to find out Pythagorean triplet in the array. So let's understand the question clearly. So we have a array of positive integer in which we need to find a triplet ABC, which satisfies this condition A square plus B square equal to C square, where ABC is an element of array. And our function should return true if we have such kind of triplets available in our array or else function should return false. So for example, if input array has this element 9, 3, 1, 6, 10, 4, 8, then this should return true. Why? Just because here we have a triplet available which will satisfy this condition 6 square plus 8 square equal to 10 square, right? Similarly, if we have a input array 9, 3, 1, 6, 4, 8, then our method should return false just because we don't have any such kind of triplet which will satisfy this condition a square plus b square equal to c square. Before you go to the solution part, we would request you to pause this video and try to solve this problem to yourself first. We will solve this problem in two different methods. Method one is a simple method uh, where we will use the brute force algorithm and method two will be having a most efficient solution. So let's see the method one first. Let's say if our input sequence is this a1, a2, a3 and it will go till an where the size is n. So in this approach we would be using a three nested for loop where i value will start from a zeroth index, j value will start from index number one and k value will start from index two. And let's assume is um, a of i square is x, a of j square is y and a of k square is z. So inside third loop we will check this condition whether x plus y is equal to z or not or x plus z is equal to y or not or y plus z is equal to x or not. If this holds true then we will return true from here and if we will calculate the time complexity of this algorithm then that would be order of n cube and why just because uh, here uh, all these three uh, i, j, k is going through the n, n elements and just because we are using a nested for loop, so total numbers of comparison which is happening over here is n into n into n, which is order of n cube. And in other words, we can uh, calculate as uh, we need to find out three elements out of n elements. So this is nothing but n c3. So this would be n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 divided by 3 into 2 into 1. So this will come uh, as in form of a n cube plus p n square plus c n plus d where a b c and d are constant so whenever we have a polynomial uh, function like this so we always do consider the higher order of that polynomial function which is nothing but n cube here so overall the time complexity would be order of big o n cube and if you talk about uh, space complexity over here so space complexity is um, constant here just because uh, apart from this input array we are not using any extra uh, memory so that will be a constant order of big o one and now let's see our second method which is our most efficient solution and in this we need to go through uh, these three steps in step one uh, we will update every element of the array by their square value and then we need to sort this squared array in increasing order then after that in step three we need to search a pair x and y such that x plus y equal to z so where x is nothing but a square y is nothing but b square and z is nothing but c square let's dig into our step number three and uh, let's understand how we do perform a search operation to figure out uh, triplets x y z such that x plus y value should be equal to z after executing step number one and two, our input array will become like this 1, 9, 16, 36, 64, 81, and 100. So, this input array we will refer as in squared array. And what we need to do in this first, we need to fix z value as the last element of the squared array. So, we will start from here at the last element of uh, this squared array. And then we need to find a pair x and y in between first element. This is our first element and z element. If you will find such kind of pair, then we need to return true from here. Else, we need to decrease our z value by one index, and then we will repeat our step 3.2. Let's understand this step by step. We'll search our pair x and y in this manner. Initially, we'll be we'll be adding the uh, element value of x and y, and if that value is element value of z, then we have to return 
uh, from here that means uh, we have found our x and y pair or else if summation is greater than uh, the z element that means we need to decrement our y value or else we need to increment our x value and this we need to keep on doing till x is lesser than y so this operation we need to do n minus 2 times just because z value can go till second index so let's complete our example with this logic now our a of z value is 100 and x is pointing to 1 and y is pointing to 81 so we'll add this so 1 plus 81 is 82 so basically 82 is lesser than 100 that means now we will be incrementing x by 1 and now our x will be pointing to 9 then again we need to repeat this process just because uh, y is still greater than x so 9 plus 81 is 90 again 90 is lesser than 100 that means we need to increment x by 1 and now our x will be pointed to 16 then we'll do 16 plus 81 which is lesser than 100 that means we need to increase our x value by uh, one more index and now our x is pointed to 36 so 36 plus 81 is uh, definitely more than 100 so in this case we need to decrement our y value so here a of x is 36 and a of y is 64 and if we'll add this up 36 plus 64 is 100 so basically a of x plus a of y is equal to a of z then we'll return true from here just because we have found our triplets and that would be in our case is 6 8 and 10 and now let's calculate the time complexity of this method for that let's analyze uh, each and every steps so in step one we were uh, squaring up all the elements value of the input sequence that will take a linear time order of big o n and in step two uh, we were uh, sorting uh, the array itself so for sorting it will take n log n and in step three we were finding the pair x and y so if you remember that uh, each and every iterations we were able to find the pair in linear time and in that how many iterations we have to do n minus two times right after executing n minus two iterations the time complexity would be order of big o n square so we can say that the total time complexity of this algorithm would be order of n plus order of n log n plus order of n square and that will be equal to order of n square and if you talk about the space complexity of this algorithm so that would be a constant here just because apart from this input array uh, we are not using any extra memory so guys remember one point here that we are making changes in the input array so in the interview time if the interviewer is saying that we cannot make any changes in the input array or input array is a read only type so how we can solve this problem well in that case also uh, we can solve that problem with uh, order of n square time complexity but in that case we would be using a extra memory let's quickly see that solution as well in step one uh, what we'll be doing basically we will be using hash table and in that we will put our ai square plus aj square value one by one and in step two we'll be looking for uh, value of ak square value from the hash table if the method get uh, will return non nullable value that means we have found our triplets and we can return true from here so if you talk about the time complexity just because we are using a uh, two for loop and every for loop we are going till n so to fill the hash table we are taking order of n square time and because of uh, order is n square that means uh, we have n square value so to store that n square value we need to have a n square extra memory so space complexity of first step would be order of n square and if we uh, look into the second step so in this we are iterating only once means we are scanning our input array only once and um, to access value from the hash table it will be a constant time all the time so total time complexity of second step would be order of n and here space complexity is constant so overall time complexity of this would be order of n square from step one plus order of n and that will be order of n square similarly we can calculate the space complexity which would be order of n square from step one and order of one from step two and that will be equal to order of n square thanks for watching this video and if you are a new user then please do subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon to get more video notification like this see you in the next interview question till then bye